on Colonial Sports Center. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Colonial Sports Center. My name is Kevin Ploucher, joined by Casey Earlwine. And Casey, we've got a ton to go through, but we've got a game that just finished up moments ago that we've got to go over. Yeah, at the UPMC Event Center, men's basketball just finished their matchup against Green Bay. An exciting game that it was. Army actually came into the game as two and a half point favorites, despite being ninth in the Horizon League, while Green Bay is tied for first. And even though last season, RMU actually crushed Green Bay in both games, lost their first matchup early this season, Green Bay. But Kevin, how'd they do tonight? Yeah, tonight, different story. Losing in OT 81 to 76. Just a really tough loss. Green Bay 29 for 35 from the free throw line. Now, obviously, the Colonials had to foul late to try and get back in it, but still allowing the Phoenix to get to the free throw line that many times is just not what you want to see. Marquise Hastings, the birthday boy, 11 for 16 from the floor, 25 points, but it was not enough. Josh Corbin finished with 23, but 13 of those points were from the free throw line. RMU just finished 7 for 24 from three. As you see, Noah Reynolds was able to carve up the Colonials with 32 points. And something that I really don't like to see is Justice Williams. He just finished 2 for 12 from the floor, 6 points. He had 5 assists, but listen, coming into this season, it was something that I definitely emphasized a lot. If he's going to be the main facilitator, he cannot take that many shots. I'm really not sure I want to see him shooting double-digit shots at all unless his mid-range game is really on point. Yeah, it has to be much more efficient if he's going to take that many shots, especially considering all the hype he had coming in, coming from LSU. And so if he is going to take all those shots, he has to make sure he's starting to hit them. Two for 12 in a big game like this where it was so close against the top team in the Horizon League, that performance is just not going to cut it for the Colonials if they want to still have a successful season this year. Right, and we're going to see later as we go through another game, we're going to see some really nice passes uh, from Justin. Williams and I think that's more what his specialty is you know he, he's crafty he's agile he's able to drive the lane and find those open people that are gonna get the easy layup or the easy dunk but just a really really tough loss like I said 81 76 Colonials now swept this season by Green Bay both at home and on the road another overtime game that seems to be a specialty for the Colonials as of late but they come up just short in this one now also, just a little bit ago, the women's basketball team wrapped up their game against Detroit Mercy in Michigan. The Colonials had lost 10 in a row coming into tonight's matchup against the Titans. They were looking for any kind of spark to kick off big February. Let's see if the Colonials were able to get back on the winning track, and they were not. They fall 68-49, their 11th loss in a row, a program record. Those 10 losses had tied the previous mark set in 2013. But this is now their 11th loss in a row, a program record. Natalie Johnson led the team with 12 points. Naomi Barnwell finished with 11 points and 7 rebounds. But the Colonials unable to get to the 50 threshold again on the offensive side, and they dropped their program record 11th in a row. Yeah, Colonials, the worst team offense in the Horizon League. You can see there, once again, did not hit the 50-point mark. And you can see it's just not working offensively for the Colonials right now. And that's a big reason why they're losing these games. A lot of times they just can't really figure out what exactly to do when they have the ball. They're making the movements, but they don't know where to move when they have the ball. I'm not really sure what to do with it as much. And so the Colonials really need looking for an answer through this season. Yeah, right? I mean, they they, they got to find something, right? You, you say something's got to give, but at this point, I'm not really sure what. Uh, you know, they say insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, you know, with this team and, and the offense that they're unable to put up. Uh, it's just this losing streak's only going to get worse and worse if they're, if they're unable to really fix some things immediately. It's going to need to be an immediate fix somewhere. I, I think, you know, you've got to start small, but the, the fix is it's going to be really difficult to come by. Yeah, and as we're midway through this season, we're going to give it now to Colby Sherwin as he's going to take us back to class as he gives, gives us his mid-season report card on the women's basketball team. Colby, what's that GPA looking like? Good morning, class, and welcome to Colby's classroom. Today, I will be grading the women's basketball yeah, good. team. Overall, they are 16 and 17 game losing streak and it's still only won one game on the road all season. Let's start with the offense and for their grade they're failing. Damn enough. The Colonials have only scored over 60 once and they lost to Wright State 77 to 80 back on December 31st. Since that game, Colonials have not even gotten over the 60 mark once all month long. 
the national stats, they rank 316 in field goal percentage at 33.44. Armio also has a turnover problem. In the game versus Youngstown State on Saturday, they had 22 turnovers. Nationally, they rank 275th. And if you're looking at the conference numbers, they aren't much better. They are last in scoring in the, among the Horizon League at 59.8 and have a negative point differential at minus 8.6. There seems to be a lot of standing around and not much ball movement, and they can't really get set plays either. I would suggest making their plays simpler and using more of a pick and roll to get the bigs involved. Let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. And while they aren't failing at a D, they are going to have to improve a ton. When watching the game, you can expect them to switch what defense they're playing from a man to zone. While I don't hate the idea, I think the execution can be much better. On the glass, the Colonials have been crushed. They rank 264th in the nation and have a rebound margin at minus 2.6. But when it comes to the Horizon League, it's not all doom and gloom. I'm going to grade on a curve because they ranked 8th in the conference at 35.2 boards a game. To turn this season around, I suggest starting up the defense and making it stronger and keeping the play simpler and keeping the other teams scoring down and having their shooting percentage plummet. Let's take a look at the coaching staff. While they started the year strong, they've tapered off lately. I have them at an F. Once the Penguins started to press them on Saturday, the Colonials were frozen. They couldn't get anything going. The ball couldn't get over the line, many turnovers, and awful shots. Timeouts also have a tendency to not be utilized, as players spend the majority of the time talking and leading them, and adjustments have not have been hard to make. As when Emily Saunders on YSC was going off, not much was done to get her under control and never got double teamed a single time. But that's enough negativity. Let's see who's been my star student. And it's for Daniel Volbatich. She's been shooting .478. She's snapped 98 boards on defense, getting a ton of possessions for the opposition. opposition. She's just been able to fight hard on defense, get real good shots on offense. He's been a real leader on the floor for the Colonials. Overall, the team is failing my class. If they want to end the losing streak, they need to shoot much better, take care of the ball, and play much more consistent defense. If we do all of that, they could make a run in March, but only time will tell. I'm surprised Mr. Sherwin didn't give every category an F for a team that just set the longest losing streak in program history. But Casey, the men's team was also in action at Detroit Mercy looking to avenge the women's basketball team loss. Yeah, that took place a few days ago as, you know, last week I was on here telling you that is my game to watch after that dog fight that happened a few weeks ago where RMU went to double overtime against the winless Detroit Mercy. Now the matchup recently occurred and it did not disappoint. Let's get right into that game as we see how RMU did in that one. As I said again, a dog fight between these two teams and the Titans still winless going into this game as we go into the first half. And now Chris Ford, he's going to find Josh Corbin here. Josh Corbin's going to drive inside. He's going to dig it out to Justice Williams. Justice Williams puts it up. That one's no good, but to Stephon Walker's there, and he puts it in for the easy put back. Good work there on the glass. And now Corbin's going to drive in again. He's going to find out Justice Williams. Justice Williams is going to come inside. He gets to Josh Corbin, who snuck around and gets a lustrous three right there. Ninja sneak on that one for Josh Corbin. And now, Colonials, we're going to go back in time here as the ball is going to get out to Justice Williams again. Justice Williams looking for some action here. Josh Corbin, another one. That one's good for three. Now we're back into the future here. Justice Williams again with the ball. And the pick and roll works. And Stephon Walker, he's got another one right there. Good work on the pick and roll. We're going to go into the second half now. Colonials, we're up big. Arm you still up 12, but this one's good. The jelly from Jaden Stone, who was my player to watch for the Titans in this game. He's showing up big. Now Titans only down by two in this game. Puts it up. That one's good for Eduardo. He ties the game in the second half with 11 and a half to go. Good matchup here. Jaden Stone's going to have it again. Titans looking to still keep in this game. This one, one hand put up. Bank is open, and so are the Titans' chances on that one. Jaden Stone, he's got the ball again. He's going to work against Chris Ford. Chris Ford doesn't know where he's going, and it's Valentine's Day soon. He's going to fall in love on the floor as Jaden Stone takes him to lunch. Oh, my goodness. Absolute terrible. And now Chris Ford, he's going to get it again, though, and he's up against Jaden Stone for three. He seals the game with redemption as RMU wins 75-67. to 67. 
Big win for the Colonials over Detroit Mercy, and we saw Justice Williams able to be a nice facilitator there, unlike against Green Bay. Now, when we come back, we've got some breaking news regarding the women's soccer team, and we head to the UPMC Event Center to get some more from the loss to Green Bay. Stay tuned here on CSC. I don't remember how it started. Not today. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. So recently on Colonial Sports Center, we've had a tough time pronouncing names. You know, everybody just can't seem to get the, uh, the flair for the names that we have here. Supiani Mele? Great. Okay. Number two. Neka Azibo. Number three. Trinity Papaman Jaris. Okay, everybody together now. Santeri Hartakai. Okay, let's get the easy ones out of the way. Number one. Rian Smythe? Mm, okay, Ryan Smith, you're close, you're close, okay. Okay. I'm Number sorry. two. Luck Lynch. Yeah, not quite, not quite, a little closer. Bring it to me. Pete Matus. Ah, Pete Matthews. But hey, you're right there, you're right there. Keep practicing, you're right there. All right, everybody, last one together, you ready? Colel Chasse. It's, it's Cole Chase. I think we should just, you know, probably just find some new people, these guys. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Some breaking news from the women's soccer team as they hired a new head coach earlier today. Michelle Rick, who spent the last two seasons as the head coach of the Division II University of Finley, was hired earlier today to replace Chris Shaw. She made the great Midwest Atlantic Conference Tournament semifinals in both seasons. She also coached at Division III Marietta. The Colonial's new head coach has some familiarity to the Horizon League as she played in college at Wright State. Now, James Walker, Rick has gotten some praise from other coaches as James Walker, Creighton's women's soccer head coach, described Rick as, quote, one of the top up-and-coming female coaches in the game, end quote. She has a 22-11-7 overall record. The women's head coaching soccer vacancy is now filled, as you see, Michelle Rick. Yeah, good to hear that she's got respect already from around the league. He's getting stuff such as praise from Big East coaches like James Walker in Creighton. And, you know, she's had some top players at Finley. Even though it is D2, she had some of the best talent. She was able to, to produce a lot of talent. And she had a lot of strong academic students as well. You know, I think it was 10 all academic team for her, her Finley uh, team, and you know that's what she looks for in her players. She looks for players who, you know, especially want that in the midfield for sure. Players who have the brains, who can watch the field, find the open spaces, the off the ball movement, the understanding of the game, who are smart enough to get into open spaces, find the passes, you be able to read everything going on around the field. Yeah, definitely interested to see how she takes over uh, from the team that you know Chris Shaw had coached up, and they recently came off their most amount of wins uh, last season. So definitely interested to see how Rick fills in for head coach Chris Shaw, former yeah. head coach Chris Shaw. We'll see how that goes next season. But now we're going to see what Garrett Sherwin's got going on because he's up at the UPMC Event Center after the men's basketball game against Green Bay to give us all the information. He's just talked to Andy Tool, and now he's going to join us right now in Colonial Sports Center, Garrett. Please come on in and join us. Go. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm here at the UPMC Event Center. Uh, the Colonials had a rough, rough, not a rough night, just, you know, they couldn't get that one stop. I asked Coach Tool about that, and he, he just said that, that some guys he doesn't necessarily feel are winning. Play want to win was the word he used, and he needs to coach that effort out of them. Thank you, Garrett, on that one. And now, what else did you see tonight in the game? I know, I know you said that Tool, you know, said the effort wasn't there. Did you see the same thing he saw? Was no, I actually saw that the Colonials were very good on offense. In fact, Marquise Hastings had 25 points. Um, that was really the big thing. That was kind of the thing that kept them in the game was really Marquise Hastings, to be completely, completely honest with you. 
Was anything asked or said about Justice Williams? He finished 2 for 12 from the floor, uh, just 6 points, but he did have 5 assists. Was there anything said about him potentially becoming more of a facilitator in the next few games? Talk about Williams being a facilitator in the next few games. Justice Williams. Oh. Yeah, Justice Williams, you know, he really is going to have to be a facilitator here. Um, at, at some points, the, co the Colonial's offense just, it's, it doesn't, they don't have many passing. They dribble the ball too much. And that he can be a person that really gets everyone involved. Um, you know, not just kind of they dribble the possession out and just look for nothing. He can be someone that can really just set up this offense, get everyone involved. And that, that's what they're going to need coming, coming up here. Thank and you, Garrett. For coming, that go back, back to you guys. Thank you, Garrett, on that one. Thanks for being up at the event center and for, for speaking with Andy Toole. We'll hope for a better result in the next game for Army men's basketball. Yeah, absolutely. Now we're going to move on because last weekend we're moving to the ice. It may be warming up, but it's still cool on the ice. Last weekend, the men's hockey team was involved in a two-day home-and-home with Mercyhurst. Game one was on Friday in Erie as the Colonials were looking to get back on the winning track. Let's see how they fared over the weekend against the Lakers. Game one, Colonials would come out on top 5-2, to two, scored three goals in the first period within a five-minute span. Cameron Garvey finished with three goals, a hat trick, capped off by an empty net goal late in the third period. And you see the Mercyhurst goalie Owen Say got pulled after the first period after giving up three goals. The Colonials get back on the winning track after losing five of their last six. Now moving on straight into the game two, we're going to go right in Colonials. One once again, four, two, three. Army would go into the third period down a goal, 3-2 to two in this one, but they'd get a goal from Tanner Klimke, and Dallas Tulik would score his second goal of the game, and the Colonials would win this game and sweep this series, and this would put them ahead of Mercyhurst in the standings, but they're still third from the bottom, as you can see here. Francis Boivere, 31 saves in this one, taking over for Chad Veltri once again. Colonials will be in action again tomorrow as they play against bottom-placed Army. And now we're going to switch right on over into women's hockey as last time out they were up in Syracuse, New York, and they stayed around in that same area as they went to Rochester to play RIT. And earlier this season, RIT won their first game against the Colonials in eight games. And you can see right here, Colonials got one back, and it was the Elena GM Pietro show. She scored two goals, including the overtime winner in this one. Her electric play was once again on shine here as the Colonials would win this one 3-2 in an exciting overtime win. Game 2 against RIT on Saturday. The Colonials were unable to complete the two-game sweep falling 3-2 in OT. Casey, didn't you just say this? Elena Giampietro scored two goals once again, but it was not enough. Emma Gorski posted 31 saves. Kylie Aquaro scored the game-winning goal for the Tigers. An even split of the four games the two teams played this season. Now, when we come back, it is a new era for women's lacrosse. Plus, the softball preseason poll and schedule's out, and the track team was in action. Stay tuned here on CSC. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight, he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago, in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect when I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. love. 
Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Now, as you said, it is a new era for women's lacrosse after losing the MAC championship last year by two goals. And Kevin, I hear we're having someone take over for us right now. Yeah, absolutely. They're heading into their first season with new head coach Courtney Grove, who comes to RMU after a long career at Seton Hill. Over the last decade, she helped guide the Griffins to an overall record of 106 and 64. Now, Josh Woodman has more about the team's upcoming season as they look to continue being one of the mainstays in the MAC. It's a beautiful night here at the Joe as we're here to preview the women's lacrosse 2024 season under first year head coach Courtney Grove. The Colonials ended their 2023 season in a heartbreaking fashion, losing in the MAC championship to Central Michigan for the second consecutive season. Katrina Silva stepped down after the loss, leaving a vacancy to be filled by a new coach. On July 5th, RMU named Courtney Grove the successor. After spending 10 years leading at Seton Hill, head coach Grove took some time to speak with Colonial Sports Center about taking that step up to Division One. Yeah, it's a great opportunity um, to take on the challenge, but I think in the end, you're coaching lacrosse with a bunch of girls that want to learn and improve each day. With Groves came new assistant coach Emma Simmer, Groves' right-hand woman. She brings a ton of knowledge defensively, offensively in the midfield. Um, her and I have been together for 10 plus years as well. So I think just our relationship together, we read each other. But Emma is a competitor and she brings that to the staff and to the team. Grove and Simmer might be new, but they'll have plenty to work with already here at RMU. Colleen Tiff and Chelsea Coleman are back for the Colonials, having led the team in goals last year. Coleman, a sophomore last season, scored 43 goals, while Tiff, now a graduate student, finished three behind with 43 goals. Um, I think it's very important. That's one of our top goals this year. But I think before we even think about that, we need to think of game by game, day by day kind of mentality. That's where we are right now. I think that's kind of what we lacked last year. And we just looked at the big picture and forgot the rest. So I think we're taking it day by day this year. Yeah, I'd say um, a, huge mind, a huge mindset shift of just you know, doing the little things right every day and that will add up to getting back in the semifinals, getting back to the MAC championship, things like that. But, you know, it doesn't start right away, you have to day by day. While Grove and her players have plenty of experience under their belt, it'll be tested when the Colonials travel to THE Ohio State University for the third year in a row. Last season, the Colonials lost to the Buckeyes, but this year, Grove and her players are looking to get a result to build off of ahead of the max season. Yeah, I think the girls are excited. Um, they keep saying it's always fun to play at Ohio State. They have a, we have a lot of players from the Ohio area and stuff like that. So they're excited and I think it's just a great opportunity for us as coaches as well to go out there and play Ohio State and see what it's, what it's about for these girls and just to get going in the 2024 season. I think it's really important. Ohio State's always a good um, start to the season for us. We always look forward to it. They're great competitors and they're going to make us better. And we're going to learn a lot, so I think it's going to be fun competition. The Colonials open up their preseason play against Ohio State tomorrow and will begin their road to a coveted MAC championship when they face Akron March 17th. But the first year head coach doesn't want to get ahead of herself. Yeah, the MAC's going to be challenging. There's a lot of new coaches, a lot of uh, changes in the MAC this year, so I think we've got to focus on the little things, the process that we're putting into place um, in regards of taking one game at a time. And I think if we take all the non-conference games one game at a time, it will prepare us for the MAC, MAC uh, tournament slash MAC conference. I mean, you've got to get through each team first, one game at a time, um, and every level has, of your game has to be on. The Colonials open up their preseason play against Ohio State tomorrow. You can catch it all and more here on Colonial Sports Center. Thank you, Josh. And interesting to note about the women's lacrosse team, they are only third in the coaches' preseason poll, only receiving one first place vote after fin finishing second in the MAC last season. Maybe it has something to do with the new head coach. But now moving on to another top tier Colonials team that is starting up again, that is softball. And their schedule was recently announced, and let me tell you, there are some exciting matchups. Let's take a look at all, 
at all of these matchups here for the women's softball team. Some hometown stuff too, but you can see it is exciting stuff. They play Youngstown State at home, which is the team that knocked them out of the Horizon League tournament last season, and they only have six home series all season, one of them being just a one-game stand against Crosstown rival Pitt. And you should definitely look out for those no Northern Kentucky and Oakland series later in the season. Those are the two teams ahead of the Colonials in the preseason poll that I just mentioned. And Colonials, you can see, lots of exciting stuff. I'm sure a lot of local fans will be excited about Pitt. Kevin, anything extra to add here? Yeah, just a couple more key series. Youngstown State, the team that eliminated RMU from Horizon League Tournament last season. That's April 9th and 10th. And obviously a couple key returning players uh, to keep your eye on. Jane Garver had a sub-3 ERA last year. And infielder Charlotte Grover led the team in batting average. So definitely exciting to see the softball schedule. Now, last weekend the track team was in action at the, at the Bob Shannon Invitational. Let's see how the team did at the Bob Shannon Invitational. Gabriella Parker finished first in the women's 60-meter hurdles with 8.83 seconds. She also finished second in the women's 60-meter dash, 7.75 seconds. Hannah McDaniel first in the women's 200-meter, 25.65 seconds. The 4x100-meter relay, the Colonials finished first with just over four minutes. Erin LaQuatra first in the women's 3,000 meters, 11 minutes, 17 seconds. Emma Gia Cristoforo, second in the women's 3,000 meters with 11 minutes, 49 seconds. And Reina Todero with a nice performance in the triple jump and the long jump. Now after this, we're in for a special treat because you know what time it is? Look at the time. Top five plays are right after this. And of course, our exciting Colonial Sports games to watch. Make sure to stick around right after this. Is going to pass it off to that's uh, 21. That's uh, Adamo and uh, yeah. um. Hey, hey, be good. Keep your head up. Right. Let's get this. So to take a look at this goal here, Nick Bercusi sneaks it over the shoulder of Logan Drackett to win it in overtime, and the Colonials snap the losing streak, and they'll head on to Holy Cross with a victory. Thank you. Thank you. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. We're going right in to your top five plays of the week. Let's get right into number five. You saw this one earlier. Justice Williams, he's going to drive in the lane against the Titans. Titans are lost in the pick and roll. They can't navigate the pick and roll. How embarrassing on that one. Stephon Walker easily gets the layup after they are lost in Justice Williams sauce for number Num five. Number four, women's hockey at RIP. Back to the ice. Colonials are going to work it around in the zone. Going to work it around to Courtney Hall, who passes it to Jersey Phillips. Tip drill time. She gives the late reaction. Didn't even know it went in until a few seconds after. Sometimes you need a little luck. With her back to the goal, Phillips ties the game. Colonials would win 3-2 in OT. And now moving on to number three here. We're going to go to men's hockey now. As Walter Zacher, he's going to get over Tanner Klinke. He's going to drive with a purpose. Wrist shot goal. Absolute missile with the wrist. Out and cooking was Tanner Klinke. Twisting like stir fry right there. Perfect precision shot. And as you saw earlier, they beat Mercyhurst. Number two, men's hockey at Mercyhurst again. You've heard the name Walter Zacker. Up ahead, he gets the puck, leaves it for Tanner Klipke, who gets his shot blocked. But Cameron Garvey is there for the second chance and the goal. That was Garvey's first of what would be three goals. As you see, the first shot was blocked, but he's there for the redirect in. Colonials win 5-2. to two. 
And now we're going to stay with men's hockey here for our number one play of the week. It's going to be Chloe Buffon. And she's going to get it to the star, Elena Gian Pietro. We keep mentioning her name every week. She's going to get it here, and she's going to score for our number one play of the week. And make sure to watch her tomorrow for the RMU women's hockey Penn versus number 14 Penn State pink game. Thank you for joining us on Colonial Sports Center. I'm Casey Irwin, Kevin Placha.